my channel. Today we are doing Valentine's Day look number two. So I wanted something that would emerge fall, Valentine's Day, and transition us to spring. I feel like this is a good day to night look that can basically work under any lighting situation. We have a glowy skin, we have a nice like glittery foil on the eye. So if you're interested in recreating this look right here for your Valentine's Day date that you're planning in advance, go ahead and keep on watching. Alright guys, I already prepped and primed my eye. We're gonna go in with some Coastal Sun Hot Pots and 100 Hair Cosmetics Loose Pigments. So the first shade we're gonna go in with is Caramel. Next we're gonna go in with Petal Peach. So basically we want all the yellow and pink tones to be in the background. Next we're gonna go in with Redwood. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a thinner fluffy brush. So if I want to concentrate more on the crease, usually I will switch to a brush like this. And if I'm working with like a bigger area, I have like my, my bigger fluffy brush. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the crease. I'm gonna put some in the back of my hand. Next, I'm gonna go in with 100 Care Cosmetics Peach Glow. This is a really nice pigment because it can be sheer or it can be super foiled like this. With the flat brush, I'm gonna go ahead and lay it down where I want it. And just like this, it's pretty tacky with just the concealer. So once I lay down where I want it to be, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the J Cap base just so that I can like super secure where this is going to lay down. And I don't wanna get a lot, I just wanna lay it down so we have that extra security. I'm only going to lay it down where I want most of my pigment because if I run it all the way to the edge, it's gonna be really hard to blend. So I'm just kind of putting it there. All right, so next I'm gonna go in with Vibrant Plum. With these matte bright shades, I find that placing it and minimal blending is going to get you that bright shade that you're looking for because if I place it, I get like super intense color pigment but if I just go ahead and blend just like that, like it's either gonna get stuck somewhere or it's going to be harder to blend. So I find that with these kind of shades, I just wanna lay it down and then lightly blend with another brush. So next I'm gonna go in with a super thin fluffy brush. This is the e.l.f. crease brush. I really, really like it. I'm going to just focus on blending the very edges so that we don't blend away all our color. And I'm gonna extend it just a little bit. So you see how our matte shade is kind of just hanging out in the middle. So I wanna place it, blend the top, and then come back so that we can fade that. I'm gonna re-dip into that brighter shade and just kind of reinforce that shade all around. So next I'm gonna switch over to a short shader brush and I'm going to try my best to kind of mix these two shades together. I'm not going too intense because I don't wanna get rid of my shimmery shade. I just wanna kind of tone down this weird patch that's right here. All right, so I was kind of able to diffuse it a little bit, but I'm not entirely happy with the blending from really dark to really light. What I recommend for this issue is going in with a mid-tone shade. So I'm gonna go in with 100 Care Cosmetics Pigment. This is Blossom. So in here, it looks kind of light pink and matte, but it's not at all. This is like a really interesting shade. When you layer it on top of something, it gives you that metallic-y effect that you see right there. So if I just swatch it and blend it here, it pretty much is super light. But if I do it on top of a darker base, it's really going to give me that metallic-y effect. So with that same shader brush, I'm gonna go in with Blossom. 
and I'm kind of just merging the two shades together. So right on the middle, I'm gonna pack that on. And like I said, at first it's just gonna look like a lilac matte shade, but once it starts kind of blending in there, it will look a lot nicer. So do you see how it went from like almost white lilac to blending against these two shades and creating this like beautiful pinky purple effect? So then I'm gonna go back with that same brush that I used to place that darker purple and I'm gonna start layering this. So I'm pretty much going back and forth until I get that gradient effect that I'm working with. Until I get that gradient effect that I want between that lighter purple and the darker purple. If you feel that your glittery shade kind of got in the mix, just go ahead and apply. Just dab what you have in your brush and just kind of run it over into the lighter lilac shade and it's gonna create that beautiful transition metallic foil so that you have the two shades that blend and fade into each other. Lastly, we're gonna to start to darken up with maroon berry and I wanna grab that same thin fluffy brush and work it into the corners just to go ahead and darken just a bit. finish off the eye I'm going to start with that yellow tone and work my way to the purples next I'm going to go in with petal peach so I'm going to go straight into this bright purple shade and I want to place all of these colors towards the outer edge of the eye Alright, so I'm going to start darkening up with Maroon Berry and I like to do the step before I do the waterline only to see if I'm going to need to retouch it or choose a different color for the waterline. So I try to keep this shade as close as possible to the lash line. I feel like it adds more definition, like if you see this eye it looks a little bit more defined and this one just kind of looks a little bit more flat. I'm gonna go back into Angel's Wings. I really just like this shade because it has a little bit of pink, a little bit of white. So I'm gonna just go ahead and lay it down here and it's gonna give me that pink metallic sheen. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it to the inner corner. All 
Alright guys, so that wraps up the look. I really enjoyed this look. It was going a little bit darker in my head, but I love the turnout. I feel like this is a good transition between fall, Valentine's Day, slash working our way into spring. I think this is a great look for daytime, nighttime, and I mean, can we talk about this glow right here? Just... All right, so let's do a quick review. The NYX lip liner was soft, kind of giving me that like Urban Decay kind of lip liner vibe. So I really like it for the price point. It's a good quality. Let's talk about this Milani liquid lipstick. This is the first time that I try out this liquid lipstick and I've heard so many people rave about it. It is a little bit pricey in the drugstore. It's about $8. And usually when I do a liquid lipstick, I will fill in my entire lip with a lip liner and then top this off. Why do I feel, like do you see that? Why do I feel like I can't even like move my lips? I don't know, this is a no-go for me. I, I like the smell. I felt like I liked the formula because it was like a one swipe and you're covered, but I feel like it, it just, Mm -mm. I never have this issue and I've had really great dollar <laughs> lipsticks that perform a little bit better than this so I say save the eight dollars and invest in like a shot miss a liquid lipstick for a dollar those are really nice and comfortable if you are a fan of this enjoy it love it but for me this is not mm -mm, not gonna work so for my everyday life, I don't usually wear this much makeup I'm kind of like a more minimal but I do have dry sensitive skin so i've heard a lot about this one being compared to the tatcha one and i don't have the other one to compare it to i wanted to know if this was going to be really impossible to put on my face because when i first got it this looked like super hard and as you can tell like i kind of like warm it up and scoop it out i think it's a nice product throughout my day i feel like it does kind of help my skin look more even a little bit more blurred so i feel like for the eight dollar price point it is worth a try i think this is performing really nice throughout my day so basically i go from 6 30 in the morning all the way to five seven o'clock at night and i feel like my skin is not over dry it's not too crazy so i feel like this is this is really nice so the concealer i was originally going to use in this video is from the candid line i really enjoy their foundation as you've seen on my channel lately that's all i've been using but this this one they didn't really have a lot of options this turned out to be ten dollars which i was like okay it's a little pricey but they only had light medium medium light and i think like dark this is my issue with it i feel like this is super okay so it has like a little cool applicator but this is super yellow i'm not a fan of extremely yellow concealers i'm kind of like either it's a peach like a in between peach or a lighter just cooler tone but this yellow i feel like on my skin tone would look really off i don't know if it would work if you have yellow undertones and you are lighter complexion but this kind of hurt my heart because i lost 10 bucks there but you live and you'll learn the setting spray that i've been using every single day is the elf illuminating mist and set i'm a huge fan of the original i decided to try this one out and i first went for the illuminating one because the matte one just i feel like it could be a little aggressive especially if i'm having a longer day this one i'm already like halfway and i really enjoy it besides the fact that it has a super aggressive spray I enjoy this one. I feel like it doesn't make me glittery. It doesn't make me greasy either. It just kind of like seals my makeup and takes away the powdery effect. So I'm really enjoying this one. I'll tell you about my matte one, you know, later. Lastly, this little guy right here has been really just light. So lately I've been doing the Pixi Challenge. So basically I'm only using Pixi products for my face and seeing how that goes. And lately I feel like I don't want to wear as much powder. And my JCAT's powder is really nice. I don't overdo it either. But I felt like I wanted to try this one out because it is marketed as matte blotting powder. For me, a blotting powder is not really going to do much other than take away like the shine throughout my day. I usually never retouch during my day because quite honestly, like I don't get tang. 
So for me to use this under my eyes to dust off my face at 6.30 in the morning and come back at 7 o'clock at night and look good, like this is like $2. I mean, I feel like if you're into a more natural finish and you don't have greasy skin, you have more of like a dry skin and you want a light powder, go. Get it in your life today, okay? Really enjoying this. So that pretty much wraps up this video. This is Valentine's Day number two. I do want to incorporate a little bit of different shades for the Valentine's Day series. Of course, I have to bring in the classic red, so be looking out for that. Make sure to follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you can know every single time that I upload. Like always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.